seemed like as soon as the Supreme Court allowed constitutional carry from coast to coast, the federal government, as well as states around this country, doubled down on anti-Second Amendment laws and restrictions. And uh, it's really been a confusing time. And we want to kind of address what it is the government knows about your guns, because you own guns. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably own some guns. Uh, what does the government know about those guns? Because as they continue to put limitations on guns and maybe even deem certain guns illegal that they already haven't deemed illegal, what is it they know about your firearms? And that's what this video is about. Well, let's start with how they know. They, they, let's, let's start. They, there are records. So how can the government know? Because every time you go and you fill out a form uh, to pass your background check, that's a recorded moment in time on paper that says you own this particular firearm. Uh, so let's talk about those first, because those are the most significant records of what you own. Now, what they'll put in there in that record is whether it's a long gun, a handgun, or other firearms, which would be kind of like a Mossberg shockwave, things that they can't say are a long gun or a handgun. They're just other essentially. Um, those are there and those are also archived. So ultimately those are at the gun shop. Now, unless that gun shop goes out of business, those records are going to remain there. Um, and there's also now an addition of an electronic records that the ATF is starting to require. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Let's just kind of stick on track with that sheet that you fill out. What happens with that? Well, if that gun store goes out of business, then yes, the ATF now has those records. And if you look at those records, if you've ever seen footage or any sort of uh, photograph of those records, it is hundreds and hundreds of millions of documents that have just consumed uh, the ATF's warehouses. Uh, they have metal buildings outside that they're now filling with the, it's just so many records. Uh, because for the longest time, they weren't allowed to digitalize those because it would be considered a gun registry if they did. Now it's a little more okay, and they are digitalizing. <laughs> we'll come back to those digital records. And that's really the out-of-business records center. So that's where those records go. So really, when it comes to the records at the gun store, the only way that the ATF is going to see those records is if they're looking for a specific gun. So for example, if a gun is found in a crime, uh, they'll go to the manufacturer of that gun. That manufacturer will then say uh, which distributor they sold it to, and then that distributor will say which gun store they sold it to, and then that gun store will say they sold it to you. Um, and ideally, then you can say, well, I sold it to this person, and hopefully <laughs> that crime didn't involve you. So unless they're really looking for a gun, like a missing stolen gun that you reported to the police or a gun that was found in a crime, uh, they're not going to be looking at those records. Now, with that being said, if they decide to track certain guns, so let's say they decide that certain long guns are now illegal, uh, do they know if you own those guns? Well, yes, they do know. And how they know is the same. And we've seen them do that with other guns and gun parts. And, and recently is they'll go to the manufacturer. So there's, you know, there's a, there's certain manufacturers that make those types of guns and the type of long guns we're talking about. Most of them are made here in the U.S. So they'll go to those manufacturers and they'll ask. Who did you sell these guns to? Then they'll go to those distributors and ask, who did you sell these guns to? And then they'll go to the gun store and ask, who did they sell these guns to? And, and then if you bought them, they're going to show up at your front door. Um, and we've seen this recently with other guns and with other gun parts of them following this tracing system that ultimately leads to your front door. Now, this is, you know... It's possible, and I guess that's kind of what I'm saying, like they don't have a list of all the guns you own, 
But if you bought a certain gun and they're interested in knowing if you own that gun, they, they will know and they can find out. It's a strenuous process, uh, but when they want to know, they do know. Um, the only other way they're also going to know is if they're looking for you specifically. And before they go to the gun store and start looking for your records, what they're going to look for is they're going to look at your social media. They're going to talk to your family. They're gonna, you know, you're going to know or you're going to suspect somebody's investigating you before they actually will then go to the gun store and find out which guns you own. Now, the other exception to this is um, if you live in a state or a city that has a gun registry, then of course they know what guns you own because you've submitted to the gun registry in that state. Now, that is very illegal and they shouldn't be doing that. But of course, what we're seeing is they are doing. Uh, so if you live in certain states or live certain jurisdictions that are doing that, you know, have a gun registry, then yeah, they do know. Now, I also want to add, too, that if you look at the NICS system, um, it is getting digitalized. So gun FFLs, gun stores are now having to shift to a digital system because of the, the sheer volume of paperwork and you probably already seen that digital system recently where you go and you, you actually fill out your, your, instead of doing paperwork, you do it in a computer. Um, for the meantime, I recommend you don't do that. But all these are going into a digital system, which includes locations. Uh, because if you've looked at the new Nix form, which just came out three days ago or so, <laughs> It asks whether you live within the city limits of the city you say. And the problem with that is it's going to apply city and state jurisdictions. And we're getting on another topic here, but it could lead to some denials of, of buying firearms. Uh, because the more they know and then the more that's going into that system, you know, the more it kind of narrows down who has what uh, was kind of the point of even bringing that up. So, you know, there you go. In the end, if, if, if they want to know if, you know, if you go buy a certain gun and then maybe in four months, the government says, all right, this type of gun is illegal now. Yeah, they'll know if you have it. Of course, they'll know. They just go to the manufacturer, do reverse trace, which they do hundreds of thousands of those every year. They're very equipped and they're very good at it. They're very efficient at finding out who owns which guns. All you gotta do is start with the manufacturer. Now I know a lot of manufacturers in the U.S. make certain types of you know the gun I'm talking about here, but in the end, it's not that many. Um, it's not like thousands or anything. So uh, they they have enough agents, as you've seen the mass hiring of ATF agents um, and FBI and that kind of thing over the last few years as well. Um, they can find out where all these guns went, probably under 30 days is my guess. So uh, there you go, any insight, you know, does the government know what kind of guns you have? No, but if they wanna know, yeah, yeah, they can find out. Um, any thoughts or insight on any of that, definitely put that in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel with Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, love guns.